let me share with you a couple of stories. Um, the reason why I'm talking about a forgotten customer is because of personal experience. If you think about how we evolve as human beings in the digital age, and we're actually now using mobile as the forefront of communication, and it's the single common denominator in this universe. It's not your gender, not your race, not the credit card you're holding, and not your religion. It's the mobile phone that really interconnects us. And when we look at how we are engaged as consumers, this is the exact um, topic that I'm actually quite passionate about. And this is why the company was started as well. And I will talk a little bit about the experience, how I actually am using that personal experience to actually start a new company. I was with this company, a service provider, a telco mobile service provider for seven years. As their customer, can you imagine the lifetime value that I actually created for them? and I was roaming around as a tech executive around the region. I actually also was their broadband customer. And lo and behold, after I joined a startup, I eventually moved over to a different uh, company and the service provider that I actually joined uh, was, gave me a lower plan. And so if you think about what happened between the seven years and why I actually switched over, it's not really about the price. It's not about you know, anything else, but I wanted um, you know, a better experience as well. So when I switched over, I guess the only communication I've gotten from the service provider was an email to ask me to fill out a survey why I had left. In the seven years time, I have never been engaged upon during that uh, lifetime value of theirs, but they reaped the rewards of 800 or 80,000 to 100,000 dollars worth of my services. So this is one of the fundamental reasons. Another story recently actually came about. Uh, one of my ex-colleagues actually was with a, another service provider for 20 years. Can you imagine being with a service provider for 20 years and moving over to a new service provider because now he wants a better plan? But 20 years of service and all of a sudden he switches over, he got a phone call. He was better than me. Instead of an email, he actually got a phone call by his customer service rep. And that phone call, because they trigger them to actually give him a call, because why does this 20-year uh, customer leave you to go to another company? They got triggered and flagged. So they scripted out a reason why he should actually stay. And he asked them, what department are you from? Why are you calling me now? And she tried to really upsell him and also cross-sell him different services, why he would lose his 20-year privilege and benefits of leaving this company to a new service provider. And he said, you never called me in 20 years. And which department are you from? And she said, I'm from the loyalty department. If you're from the loyalty department, why are you only calling me when you know that I just left your company? So this is why the forgotten customer is one of the biggest reasons why large companies, large B2C enterprises will fail in the coming years. And if you think about what's sticky, what we consumers cannot live without every single day, it's already inherent in our lifestyles. It's banking, insurance, telco mobile services, and also the daily necessities that we buy through retail. And if this is the scenario, then what are they doing about it if it's so sticky already? We're inherently loyal, right? And this is why these enterprises need to wake up because what got you there, actually for 80 to 100 years, if most of these companies are that old, won't get you there in the digital economy. Fundamentally, a lot of these larger organizations will not be in this place or this existence in the next 10, 20, 30 years. So when you look at the habits that create, we're habitual creatures. And that's why we're loyal to these um, lifestyle oriented or necessities. And so if most of our decisions are based on habits, it's already sticky. Why are these large organizations still so complacent? What's wrong with this business model? So how many of you in this audience have been surprised and delighted by any of these service providers I told you? How many? Proactively. Not one hand. 
So 100% of this audience have never been proactively engaged by your service provider. Now do you know why I actually moved this company to this direction? So if you think about what companies are doing today, they actually spent the majority of their investments and marketing spend on acquisition, on acquiring new customers. So you often get spammed. You get display ads. Everywhere you go on the net, you get a front and center display that is so irrelevant to you. And it's not contextual or personalized to you because there is no connection between your lifestyle behavior and this display ad. That's why a lot of the marketing money has been sunk into waste. And this is a fundamental problem as well. But then you're not engaging the customer, so then each phase of the lifetime of this customer that's consuming your services or products will leave. And guess what? It's leaving, the consumers are leaving faster now because uh, we're so inundated with choices. Before, when this digital economy wasn't so vast and wasn't so quick and innovative, guess what? We as consumers, we sought after our choices. We sought after, we, I need to buy this, so I'm going hunting for that deal. But now, there's so much intelligence and artificial intelligence on personalizing different things for us. The digital economy is changing the way we shop. It's making it efficient, cheaper, and faster for us to consume services and products. So that's why it's the push model now um, instead of the pull, right? So if you think about um, before, I'm, as a customer, I have to do so much homework to actually go after the, the products and services before I get the best deal. Now, moving forward, you want to actually be told what to buy, what to eat, what to wear. You, you don't want to actually make these trivial decisions on your daily lives. And what we need to make our, our decisions on is solving complex problems as humans. And that's why when we talk about humans versus AI, I know I'm at SUTD, it's actually a fundamental question, but we still will be doing most of the critical thinking, right? And so why are we not solving the lifestyle and the daily habits of our consumers? So with all of this marketing spend going to waste, what are companies doing about it if actually the majority of my budget is going into advertising and spamming consumers? We got to fix this. And when you look at it, it costs five times more to acquire a new customer than to engage an existing one. Once you build a relationship, I mean, think about it. If you're a bank, you're an insurance company, you're a telco provider, you have millions and millions of customers that you have already acquired over the years. But yet, the majority of your effort every day, the company is about acquiring new ones. You know why? because they don't know, there is no strategy on engaging existing closed loop network of your millions of customers. That's why we have been the forgotten customer. We've been neglected and literally been forgotten. We're more or less like a you know, forgotten obligation. But they only deal with us when it's reactive, when a tragedy has occurred, or something else, when our experiences is really bad then we actually go to them and they react to our experience. This has to stop. So the digital economy is forcing all of these transformations from these large organizations on fixing the problem. Because you have millions of opted in customers, but yet you spend 90% of your focus on acquiring new ones. Does that make sense to you? If you spent hundreds of thousands of dollars with your service provider, and yet they're actually going after the new one. So, really about engaging your customers, like building a relationship. You need a new way to actually engage your customers in the modern era. How do we leverage technology and AI to better intelligently engage and build a more meaningful relationship with your customers? This is missing. And if we continue this path, startups and the digital and 100% mobile first companies will take the market share away from these large service providers. And it's happening. It's happening very, very fast. And so when you look at what those people and these large organizations, it's just like this guy with this magic ball. They're actually trying to predict and manually predict what's going to happen next. A lot of data engineers, actuaries, business analysts, literally doing modeling around big data. They, you know how much data points and how many data um, the 
these large organizations have collected over the last years of you being their customers, but they're not using any of this data to engage you. So what these companies are doing is hiring all these analysts and data engineers to crunch reports in a very reactive way. And that is a fundamental problem. What AI can do is actually replace some of these roles and automate the process so that anything and everything that you do around mobile can be triggered. The minute you swipe your, your credit card or tap your phone, I know exactly what you're doing and I will recommend something relevant to you. That's how you should be engaged, not a spammy um, advertisement that means nothing to you because they don't know about you. So everything in the future will be real-time events triggered based on your lifestyle behavior and consumption behavior. So where is this going? Disruption is everywhere. So when we talk about these service providers, what got them here in the last 100 years won't get them there. And what they're actually complacent about, and, and guess what? Most of these companies have so many um, people sitting on their high thrones because there's corporate willful blindness. And this is why I actually myself have left the multinational corporations because fundamentally I want to disrupt, I want to impact, and I want to solve problems faster. And when you see these GAFA and BAT-J companies, Google, Amazon, Facebook, Apple, Baidu, Alibaba, um, JD, and all the 10 cents companies, they're actually the minute because they have a capture audience and a capture pool of customers. Millions and millions of them and trillions of transactions daily. Guess what? The minute they switch the lay on to say, I will offer banking services today, I will offer you insurance and protection services today, guess what? You guys will switch overnight. And it's happened already. And there's a use case in Korea when Kakao actually offer banking services. Within two months, they consumed millions of new customers. Within two months. Actually, it takes a bank years and years to get to 6 million customers, 10 million customers. But within a short two months, three months, Kakao actually grew their base of banking clients from their closed loop network of millions of customers. Can you actually now picture the impact? Aren't you afraid if you're a bank or an insurance company today? Because everything is so reactive. They're fixing the core banking, core insurance, they're manufacturing products. The actuaries are sitting in a corner crunching and trying to mitigate risks for these companies, rather for the consumers. And they were incentivized to actually do a different job, not to delight you, not to surprise you and appreciate you, but they surprise you with a rejection of your claim. Right? So this is why the whole large enterprise B2C businesses are broken and that we're here to fix it. And on the other side, the competition is coming from the startups. No legacy, right? Very low. They're doing things faster, cheaper, and 100% mobile first and cloud. So here you have a large traditional service provider arguing with you on a thousand different no's why they shouldn't do something. And yet these startups are already doing it with very little investment. One of the companies, an insure tech company out of the US, said, it will take me less clicks for you to actually get your claim reimbursed and also to change your plan than for you to order an Uber ride. That is customer service at its best. Startups actually design products around customer centricity and customer experience. Large companies were designed to solve and optimize certain things, but not customer-centric. So they're so slow to move in this digital economy. And that's why as a startup and as these large organizations are 100% cloud-based, they can move a lot faster. There's no more excuses. So guess what? It is mission critical for these large organizations to do something today. And you have to start engaging your customers relevantly and personalize all of those things by leveraging the right technology to do so. Because your consumers are not going to wait for you. So wake up. It's mission critical. Thank you very much.